Exiled Cameroonian native Dr. Cho Ayaba is the frontline leader of the Ambazonian Governing Council and he joins us via Skype. Dr. Ayaba, good evening and thank you for joining us on the globe. Thank you for uh, having me, but I am an Ambazonian, not a Cameroonian, so 
Let me just make that slight correction. Thank you so much for that correction, uh, Dr. Ayaba. Now, do the English-speaking people want to secede from Cameroon? And uh, is this the only option for them? We are not seceding from Cameroon. The concept of secession will imply that we gain independence with Cameroon as an integral part of Cameroon. That is not uh, the case. Cameroon gained independence as a separate nation on the 1st of January 1960, inheriting the international border that was demarcated in 1916, affirmed in 1919, and reaffirmed in 1932. So we have been a separate state with an international personality as from 1990. We've had three prime ministers within a short period of time while Cameroon for over 57 years have had two presidents. Mm -hmm. So we are not seceding from Cameroon. We are struggling to restore the independence that was taken away from us in 1961. Mm -hmm. Now, you're exiled yourself. Why, do you, uh, why did you leave Cameroon? Like millions of our people scattered across the globe, we have been forced out of our homeland by the brutal policies of colonialism that Cameroon has imposed on us across different sectors of our society. It dismantled our political institutions, muscled out our economic system, and took over our legal and educational system, and engaged in acts of torture, systematic brutality against our people, pushing millions of our people out of the country. Now, Dr. Ayaba, what about the people who were left behind? What do they have to endure on a daily basis? According to uh, UN data, the ongoing war has affected more than 6 million people. We have about a million people internally displaced because Cameroon has used helicopter gunships to burn down more than 400 villages. It has used schools as military barracks. It has pushed millions of our people into its own country through its actions. So our people are going uh, through hell. But it is simply visible today because we have invoked our right under international law to self-defense. But this is exactly what has been going on for close to 58 years, hidden under the radar. Why is it still hidden under the radar? Why is it only coming out now in recent times, um, the difficulties that are being faced by the Amazonian uh, people in Cameroon? Simply because there was an international conspiracy in 1961 to take away uh, the sovereignty over our country and hand it over to Cameroon. So the United Kingdom, the United Nations and other countries did not want to become culpable in this international conspiracy. So they maintain mute silence as far as Cameroon was the only party that was armed, could exercise brutality over our people. Mm -hmm. When we rose up three years ago in massive demonstrations to highlight the plight of our people, they never listened. We were butchered on the streets. The world stayed silent in the face of ongoing genocide nobody care they refuse to invoke the responsibility to protect to protect our people we call on our people to defend themselves defend our territorial integrity and defend the lives of our children and our women and that's when they started listening now, the United Nations, uh, uh, you know, are, are basically now getting or highlighting um, the problems and the issues that are taking place in Cameroon for the Amazonian people. Are you engaging the United Nations in trying to find a solution going forward for your people? The United Nations is not. The United Nations is mainly concerned with the humanitarian situation. Uh, a prominent humanitarianist in Oslo did inform the United Nations. You cannot be concerned with the displacement. You cannot be concerned with the refugees without 
looking at the root causes that compel them to become refugees in the first place. The United Nations has maintained utter silence to the root causes of the problem. The international system through uh, the government of Switzerland called for discussions at the level of the international system. Cameroon failed woefully to commit uh, to that process. The United States, Britain, and other countries failed also to engage in a meaningful way to assure our people that the process will be credible. So we are still expecting the United Kingdom, the United Nations. And I was in South Africa, and I called on the South African government to remember their own history and the contributions we all made as African people to ending apartheid, which has just been declared a few hours ago as crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. Africa must wake up to the issues that haunt different peoples within the continent. And we expect all stakeholders in the international system to bring Cameroon on the table to negotiate its exit from our homeland. Now, Human Rights Watch alleges that uh, your militia kidnapped well over 100 people ahead of recent election. Is this the case? And, uh, you know, what do you have to say to that? We don't run a militia. We have a well-constituted self-defense organization that is premised on its code of conduct reflecting the four Geneva Conventions on the laws of war. So we are well-constituted army. Yes, in uh, a chaotic situation like this, there are bound to be crimes that are committed. But we are taking strict measures to ensure that our soldiers conduct themselves with utmost respect for international rules. But the massive violations of human rights in our homeland has been committed by Cameroon. Journalists in Cameroon's troubled English-speaking regions say separatists are attacking them um, because of critical reporting and refusal to broadcast rebel propaganda. Is this true? I am not aware, except you may want to, I mean, cite any case where our forces or our people have attacked journalists. We have been critical against journalists that misrepresent the issues, uh, referring to us as a ge geographic region of, of Cameroon. For example, I just corrected you right mm -hmm. away for calling me a Cameroonian. Those mm -hmm. are the kinds of critiques that we make uh, mm -hmm. on, on journalists who themselves are scared, you know, to address the situations correctly because they face retribution from the government of Cameroon. Dr. I, Dr. Ayaba, Dr. Ayaba, are you you're still with us, right? A Cameroonian court handed life sentences to ten separatist leaders in the past. Do we know what their condition is and how um, many remain incarcerated? We have more than three thousand five hundred Ambazonians that are locked up as prisoners of war across different jails in Cameroon. We all know that the prisons of Cameroon are far beyond any standard that protects human dignity and uh, uh, human rights. They have been subjected to psychological torture. They have been subjected uh, to brutality. Uh, prisoners have been tried through very unfair processes and handed out long sentences uh, by the regime in Yaoundé. We, we have asked that these prisoners be considered as prisoners of war and be subjected to international Inter international law protection. Now, Dr. Ayaba, very quickly, just in wrapping up, where to from here? We have defeated Cameroon in battle. We now control more than 85% of our territory. It was demonstrated on the 1st of October when we filed uh, through our streets in celebration of our Day of Independence. A few days ago, we rejected completely Cameroon's uh, elections in our country no consent was given to Cameroon for governance. It is time for the United Nations, the international system, to recognize Ambazonia as an independent state, help us set up a transitional authority to reopen schools, rebuild our burned villages, and rebuild our lives battered for over 57 years. 
Dr. Ayaba, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We'll leave it there for now. That is uh, exiled Ambazonian native Dr. Cho Ayaba. He is the frontline leader of the Ambazonian Governing Council, and he was joining us there via Skype. English-speaking separatists in that francophone country has killed more than 3,000 people and displaced Now, have you heard of, of Ambazonia? It's been the country nearly a year doesn't since exist. The well, only in the minds of successionists in two English-speaking regions and majority French-speaking Cameroon. DW gained exclusive and access to the front line of the fighting. Our correspondent, Blaise Young, traveled with Cameroonian government soldiers battling separatists in the Anglophone areas in the east, or in the west, rather. Um, which are the worst affected by the conflict. Cameroon's elite forces are raiding the building in front. They're suspected of being a hideout for the country's anglophone separatist militias. Separatists in Cameroon's English-speaking regions wants to create a breakaway state they call Ambazonia. They often use abandoned properties like this as their camp. Cameroon soldiers are tasked with curbing the insurgency, which started as a street protest. We're not in a state of war, we're in a crisis. We're in a situation where we have to restore law and order. Those men are our brothers who have just gone astray. This is a corner, a once very lively town, now in ruins. Fighting between separatists and the army has forced inhabitants to flee. It's been like this for three years. Nothing in the town is functional, not even hospitals. Soldiers, separatists and civilians have all suffered huge casualties here. Soldiers blame the militias for everything. As time has passed, we have noticed the conflict has progressed. The separatists have launched a campaign against the population. They carry out kidnappings and ask for ransom. But the Cameroon army has been accused of committing serious human rights abuses against the local population, allegations it has repeatedly denied. However, soldiers have filmed burning villages and attacking civilians. Meanwhile, Hundreds of separatist fighters have left the movement, citing financial mismanagement from their leaders abroad. This man was a separatist fighter for three years. He has now joined a government amnesty program. Some of us have realized everything we were told about the separatist movement was a lie. The leaders used us to make money for them. That's why I stopped fighting. We leave a corner with an armored vehicle on our way to a military base in Moyoka, yet another town devastated by fighting. Along this road, everyone has fled. At the military base, security is always tight, the commander tells us. Separatists have their own camps just a few kilometers away. Though the army has set up barracks like these across Anglophone Cameroon, attacks from secessionists still take place. But the army says they are working hard to counter these attacks. The army shows us weapons, including explosives, which they say were seized from the separatists. In another town, this hospital was burned to the ground. Soldiers and separatists point fingers at each other for the act. At least four patients died on their beds. The local population is living in fear because they have the impression that the separatists are living alongside them. But efforts are being made so that they can live in an atmosphere free of fear. Cameron's government say they are planning to rebuild the Anglophone regions. Nevertheless, it's still unclear how this will happen with continuous fighting and destruction in the area. It's the mobile wing. Now, this Prime Minister of the Southern Cameroon, under the uh, under the 
using the two alternatives, he had administrative, administrative authority, he had the, develop, uh, the economic development in his own hands. In general, it was going to be a matter for which could be discussed. Now, this Prime Minister of the Southern Cameroon, under the, uh, under the, using the two alternatives, he had administrative, administrative authority, he had the, develop, uh, the economic development in his own hands, and uh, of course, Security in general it was going to be a matter for which could be discussed, you see, to make it um, both for the federal government or what we call concurrent. That is to say, I was, or the Prime Minister of the Southern Cameroon was going to be in charge of the police and uh, the um, the army could be um, could be national territorial. We didn't think of the of the um, Yandam to be extended the southern Cameroon for any reason. It was because when um, when he when the there was no constitution that he managed to send the gendarme in the southern Cameroon and uh, gradually now posting all this there his obedient uh, uh, troops there are his obedient civil servants and they can do anything there they are protected by him so anything could happen when did the gendarmes come into West Cameroon? Mm. Let's say as soon as the British troop left. You know, the British tr trained um, a mobile wing with not, ma not many at all. So the gendarme came to help the mobile wing and um, to, to, f to man some of the places. And when they came, the mobile wing was holding some part of the stations, and they were holding other parts. But they despised the mobile wing, while the mobile wing also despised them, because they had no, no, no form of uh, military, military maneuver as they. Most of the terrorists were were captured by the by the mobile wing, Southern Cameroon mobile wing. They combed the frontiers of the Mongo Santa and got brought out some of the uh, the terrorists who were ha ha happening there. And of course, it was the Nigeria um, from Nigeria. I mean, the Nigerian forces which which left Nigeria. 
people, you know, general like General Tato and um, others who really did the coming of the frontier without killing. They didn't kill the, they didn't kill the terrorists. They rounded them up, used them to find out where the others were, treated them well, and then bring peace. <coughs> the Southern come about computer. The Southern Cameroon has no, no, nothing to administer with the taking over of the or with the dissolution of the House Nelson's National Assembly and the House of Chief. And everything, there was no, no authority in the southern Cameroon. That's what is called annexation. Annexation went much further that anything that existed in the southern Cameroon was not allowed to remain under that name. First, the Cameroon Bank, which had outgrown other banks in La Republic, was the source of income uh, by people from Douala, Kongsamba, and all these other places who want money for trading. Before that time, before 1970-something, <coughs> before 1970-something, no bank in La Republic could borrow money, uh, give a loan up to one million. If you want a loan up to uh, beyond the 500,000, you have to fly to France. Only France will approve it. But the Cameroon Bank had reason to loan money to, the, to, to five million. So traders in, the, in Douala and along the Mongo and furthermore were able to get enough loan. <coughs> that was <coughs> not so good for Aijo. That was why then all, everything, the southern Cameroon must fall. We organized the development agency to give loans to farmers and so on, to businessmen. And uh, Moso Nanga Company was rising up to compete the other companies, the French company. <coughs> <coughs> and had, in fact, built the prime minister's, uh, the prime minister's um, office in the southern Cameroon out of a mere 45 million francs at that time. But that a building like that could have cost the could have cost no more no less than a hundred and fifty million. But using the English way of economy and way of organizing labor, Nanga Company was able to do it for 45 million. That was a slap on the face of uh, um, the Republic of Cameroon. It was an indication that the British were going to abolish or more or less lessen the, the amount of bribes and the money they get from the contracts. <coughs> and so everything was by not signing the the draft constitution everything fell in the hands of Aijo the one of the the next project which we had was lottery i sent a team to Israel to train for lottery. They came and established a, a rapidly growing 
uh, lottery. And we were getting the money now to build a hospital and clinics. Ahijo didn't want the people of his own section to, to patronize our lottery. I tried, the Prime Minister, uh, Sally was a Prime Minister. I negotiated with him, but Ahijo did not agree. That the people of the same country. Now, I said we were going to share the profits. He just did not agree. And then after 1970, then he transferred it. It became central. Now, the, the Youth Day was formed on the Southern Cameroon to commemorate the independence for the Southern Cameroon. Independence Day, which was the plebiscite day. Because there was no other greater thing achieved in the Southern Cameroon than by voting so massively for independence and unification. The 11th February is a historic day for the Southern Cameroon, which should be commemorated. That was formed by me and by my government of the Southern Cameroon in 1964. Then, <coughs> 1968, well, the East Cameroon were imitating, want to imitate it. So Aijo thought it should be centralized, it should be made central. So he centralized it to be um, also practiced in all, the, in all parts of the Federation. That was 1960, about 1968, four years after. <coughs> but he did not say that it was there, it was a new, it was started in 1968, he said. Imagine, I think, which was being run in the Southern Cameroon since 1954. When he transferred it, he didn't mention the Southern Cameroon. It was originated in 1968, <laughs> or 1966. It might have been 1966 when he transferred it, between, between these two dates. So uh, Cameroon, Southern Cameroon was Tinning coffee. And this coffee was of standard to merit um, export exportation. And as much of a good part of it was being exported. In the name of label, in the name of Southern Cameroon CDC. Tea was the same. I hear you saw to it that the Santa Coffee Estate was abolished. And so there was no other uh, means of the Southern Cameroon, you see, running, uh, getting its own in independent income. So all the income, we must look to Yaoundé as the only father of the Federation to do everything. And now, they, so this, the Prime Minister of the Southern Cameroon was going to be left with no duty so he has to abolish it. And uh, in the practice of Francophone, and then not French, as we may say, if you are an uh, assistant to any post in, in Yaoundé, you are just there in order to get your money and do what the president say or you might as well resign. Money to keep people in a post was not their, diff was not their difficult. It was obedient to, the, to their party and keep as a subordinate. And with, with, with us, that was not possible. We were not running that much. So he had to get a new set of people, you see, who who had to tow his line of action. I found myself, you see, incapable of doing things in a very awkward way, in obedience to the head of state. Because I insisted that anything that I do should reflect my own mentality. And uh, everything that I did which was going to do that was abolished. I was charged with the president 
or national president or chairman of the higher national council for education and um, I held that post up till the time I left or before the time I left I had talked so much about technical education that uh, in the end um, a good subsidy from the United States president I think President Agnew gave 10 million uh, dollars. That was a big sum of money at that time for technical education. And I told Aijo that I would like the Southern Cameroon to benefit from that 10 million by raising the Technical College of uh, Ombe to a higher technical college and institute um, as at the beginning one in Bamenda. But I used to spend all that money on his own side. Instead, I never knew that he, that was his, uh, his, his ways of doing things. He said it is, it is centralized, about it is downgraded the Ombe Trade, Trade Center Technical College to the grade of his own cap. All the heavy equipment left by the British were looted. Our, everything was run, and then he post, he transferred all the, um, the British trained teachers there. He transferred them to teach secondary school. Then I had There's a problem. To no, the form of the state. The form of the state. You know, in our questionnaire to Anglophones, we try to influence <laughs> the Anglophone opinion. But we did not succeed. Therefore, it shows how deep the problem is. When you say you tried to influence... We, we tried to influence... How, how? Good question. When we said, what form of government do you think can solve this problem? Federation for example, decentralization, as we are trying to live it now. I think just about four or five people reacted out of a thousand. Sixty-nine percent of Anglophones said Absolute, the word they use, many use was absolute separation. That is to say, cessation. What? Who was taken aback? Cessation was not on the questionnaire. You had no. federalism and no. decentralization. No. Yes. And they ignored the two. But then, then we said, said, have you any other proposition to make? We left it open. Have you other proposition? But many said in the questionnaire, acting on outside the questionnaire, said they should we should have proposed also a referendum. They say no, a referendum is not a form of state, form of government. Uh, and when you look at that um, reaction. What do you read within the lines? Uh, what, would, what, do you, what would you conclude is the stand of... We drew the conclusion. We drew the conclusion. Because uh, we have a document now, the causes, the propositions of those who reacted to our questionnaire, about a thousand people, and then our own, what we think. 
for those who reacted to our questionnaire, 69% are convinced that if we want to love each other, that is to say, if the Anglophones and Francophones want to leave us brothers and sisters, absolute separation on the level of government, that is, is important. And that is what uh, sounds like a taboo. Our position is that everything should be put on the table. There should be no taboo. That's our own position. But not that it is our own, uh, not that we are saying that we should absolute separation, but we say whatever the opinion of them, let us listen to him. But let cessation, cessation should be on the table of discussion yes. in the national dialogue. Let them try to convince us. If they convince us, we should take it. If it's convincing. That is why I think personally... Are you, say, are you saying that if the people who are standing for cessation convince, uh, convincingly present their point of view, uh, President Paul Bia should accept to separate well, Cameroon? Of course. Is it feasible? <laughs> it's it's possible since it is human. It's not the law of God. We were not that. You know, we were uh, separate. Were we not? We were. Do you think that separation is going to solve this problem? Personally, do you think that separation can solve this problem? Of course. There's a problem. Now, the form of the state. The form of the state. You know, in our questionnaire to Anglophones. I wonder why we're wasting time running on the spot when, let me tell you something, Joe. See where we are, see where we came from. Let me tell you that this a brief history of this crisis. It started with teachers and lawyers' um, grievances. I don't, rem I don't think anybody remembers Tame Valentine or Afu, I don't remember his first name, or the trade union leader. I don't, nobody remembers them anymore. Because at the time they were talking, they said they were troublemakers. That is at the level of teachers and lawyers' grievances. We moved to consortium. I don't know if anybody remembers anymore who was who at the consortium. It was banned. We've gone to a level that is the call for a federation. We left from um, 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 professional grievances to the call for a federation, which was at that time called a taboo subject, and people were locked up because of that. And then we've gone to a level where a group abroad is calling for uh, for, 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 for restoration of independence without arms. We're not talking. We, there is an armed group waiting. If there is Kakof governing council, there is the Ambazonia governing council of Cho Ayaba, which wants what, nothing, what, what, which wants nothing but an armed struggle. So we are missing every. The things are shifting, and the more we waste time, the more it gets radical, the more it gets dangerous for the country, for everybody. Because if there is a war, we are all in danger. It's but better we that, that now. Government, it is government shifting is and getting more radical. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. shifting and getting more radical. Each time we pretend that we can't talk with this people, oh. somebody else is warming up to get it worse. Let me okay. I wonder why we're wasting time running on the spot when, let me tell you something, Joe, see where we are, see where we came from. Let me tell you that this is a brief history of this crisis. It started with teachers and lawyers' um, grievances. I don't, rem I don't think anybody remembers Tame Valentine or Afu, I don't remember his first name, or the trade union leader. I don't, nobody remembers them anymore. Because at the time they were talking, they said they were troublemakers. That is at the level of teachers and lawyers' grievances. We moved to consortium. I don't know if anybody remembers anymore who was who at the consortium. It was banned. We've gone to a level that is the call for a federation. We left from um, 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 professional grievances to the call for a federation, which was at that time called a taboo subject, and people were locked up because of that. And then we've gone to a level where a group abroad is calling for 
uh, for, 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 for restoration of independence without arms. We're not talking. We there is an armed group waiting. If there is Kakof governing council, there is the Ambazonia governing council of Cho Ayaba, which wants what, nothing, what, what, which wants nothing but an armed struggle. So we are missing every. The things are shifting, and the more we waste time, the more it gets radical, the more it gets dangerous for the country, for everybody. Because if there is a war, we are all in danger. It's but better is that, without why government, it is government shifting is and getting more radical. Mm -hmm. It is shifting and getting more radical. Each time we pretend that we can't talk with. These people, somebody. The Amazonian chief in command, the president of the Amazonian Governing Council, Dr. Ayabacho Lucas, during the first visit to Amazonia to inaugurate the Amazonian Defense Forces. This was reality. Even though so many politicians and bad leaders in the struggle did everything. To sabotage this great heroic movement. Today, history has proven that Dr. Ayabacho Lucas is a revolutionary leader, the father of self defense. He does not just go to Canada for conferences abroad, does not just go to Belgium for conferences abroad does not just go to South Africa for conferences, does not just go to Nigeria to sit and talk about things under the AC. Dr. Ayaba Cholukas believe in walking the talk and not talking the walk. Somebody who goes live and speaks for 10 minutes. Look at his pocket. He is well secured and armed. Look at his pocket. You can see his pocket, where his pocket is. Look at his waist level. The waist level is well armed. In him, there are more than three pistols ready to pull the trigger. He's a man of dignity, man of respect, man of his words. This was in Amazonia, in Daddy village. So many people were very jealous, very greedy people. They did everything to sabotage this movement. Today, history has proven. Unlike Akwanga, Dr. Ayaba is a father of self-defense and no one can stop that. That's the reality. With Dr. Ayaba Chow Lucas, Ambazonians have regained their hopes. We have restoration today and self-defense. We have the military today. We have well-equipped and armed soldiers today. Thanks to Ayaba Chow Lucas. It will never be business again. Politicians can play their game. They can extort money from people and not put in action. They can lie to people they will deliver and don't deliver and the people keep supporting them the real ambazonians now know their leader the real ambazonians are awakening that we are in a revolution and not in a party ceremony we are not in church ceremony god bless ayaba Chot lucas god bless ambazonia we now believe in the real people because we believe in reality now we now see the reality because we have nothing left than our revolution we have nothing left than to win. Let the people playing politics continue to play politics. Let those bad people who has come to continue so that we may suffer in this revolution. So many times they have tried to discredit the works, achievement of our great leader. Some of us were taken away from the great leader, but we have now seen the need for independence as the ultimate need. And we are now standing in the sub-defense, in the road map called sub-defense. That was crafted by Ayabacho Lucas, just like Dr. Ebenezer Akwanga. As much as we believe in Dr. Ebenezer Akwanga, we believe so much in Dr. Ayaba, who has stayed in one area and has not moved. Since he came with ADC, he formed the ADF, which is the military of the AGC. With the Amazonian Governing Council, the issue of the flag, he has been so brave with the issue of, issue of the flag, the issue of having Amazonian military. He knows that if you want to form a country, you need to have the military because you need to seize your sovereignty. You need to control your land and make it ungovernable for the occupier, for the illegal occupier, La Republic du Cameroon. So many people have been fighting, believing in diplomacy, but he believes in targeted diplomacy, like the one that you saw in UNPO of recent. Like he believes that we must smoke the hell of La Republic out of Amazonia and chase La Republic to the gates of hell. 
look at his waist his waist pocket his waist is well armed inside him are many pistols that are ready to pull the trigger he does not just place everything in the hands of the security or military he himself is a chief in command not like that one in Yaoundé who cannot even use a knife but he can if he give a case he on bazookas he if he on kalashikovs he can operate all of them long live ayaba long live agc long live amazonian defense forces this is colonel vala i saw Conscience for dead Ambazonian people today. Say, we don't know when uh, Secretary Chris Anu be resigned. This is the crook of the matter. When he be resigned because of the problem with APNC, a situation happened. And if any man argue me, I go show you with proofs of videos, I mean audios. When Chris Anno resigned, a time of final wait he happened. That one passed. Suddenly, I received a call from my sister, Madam Ngwa Irene. He had Joshua Kha for line. And he tell me, say, we need to do something now because APNC go hold. Doc, uh, um, uh, Mr. Siseko. He don't need talk. He want control IG. He want control thing them. We don't finish. We don't finish. We go lost power. We need to do something now. I say so. Wait, we go do. Say you need to do something. Wait, I need for bring up some story. I need to bring up some story for for, for frame me up. I say which kind of story? Joshua Kao was on the line. He said we get to create them now to make the media know. Say he whole meeting from from the from prison. And so if it hold Zoom meetings on prison and it control the people outside, the Republic government, they know the authorized phones or communication outside, they could send it for solitary confinement. When they send it for solitary confinement, that will be all and they will work without any rivalry. Joshua was very excited for go do that. Make it go try for argument. You are sacrificing your life to defend who is busy planning to eliminate you. How can Rockley Juba go through this? <laughs> How? How can Rockley Juba go through this? How? Why would you allow this to happen to him? Why? Don't we have conscience? What is happening? Make your money. Use frankly you met. Industrial, industrial um, subject in both primary school and the new colleges which might be, be built. Then this finished their qualification and came and came back about 1966. Not one of them was post, posted in Limbe, so they were made to teach English in other schools. Nothing was mentioned about technical education and so on. So the, the University of Cast, technical, I mean, technical 
University of Caste, which was to be built, which was one of those which was to be built alongside with the University of Yaoundé. We couldn't get teachers in those days, we couldn't get funds in those days. And the United, Nation, United States sponsored the Peace Corps and the principal who opened the pre-university of, of caste in the, in the form of high secondary school. It grew so rapidly and got the CDC at very good rate. Their um, successes in the GC advance, especially their scientific, scientific knowledge, she was high. Aijo and the rest, you see, detected that and started dwarfing them in the polytechnic of Yaoundé. So much that by 1985, the number of English um, students who left caste and entered very, with very great difficulty were only 10. All those who were entered there found the condition either so bad that they managed to leave, or those who remain out of the whole time since 85, only 10 out of 400 who have graduated in the Polytechnic School of Yaoundé. So I noted that Aijo wanted to dwarf Southern Cameroon as far as as far as technology, School of Technology was concerned. And uh, later on, when he decided to decentralize the University of Yaoundé, he left the University of Caste, not mentioned. He later on proposed a university for Buya. And you know how long that took. He put the name after he had been approached. I have asked him, he proposed that one. Mm. Now he didn't want to do anything with caste in order to keep the, the, uh, the, the northwest and southwest, you see, divided. So he proposed a university of, of um, a university with no anything, probably. It was going to be a university of culture. He later on made it a translation bureau, as we call it. How could a, uni a whole university be for university, for translation? And so it, 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 was, it was built. Those buildings were with equipment, I mean, with no equipment and with a number of teachers what were they teaching? About less than a hundred students were there, a the whole university. It was recently when Paul Bia found me trying to uh, raise um, so much objection for rejecting the Southern, um, I mean the Cameroon, Southern Cameroonian in the technical education, uh, technical University of um, Douala. When he started trying to allow very few to enter, very few, few English speaking Cameroonians to enter. Otherwise, they wanted to dwarf.
I say it ain't enough. It ain't enough. Mm, Una, sorry. Say they enough. Papa don't narrate. How they come take everything, everything for them, everything for them. Mm, they come take everything. All the Ferrari we were supposed to enjoy today. All the big, big mansion we were supposed to stay today. All the car enjoyment we were supposed to forget today. The contact. Now where Papa don't the, the talk, the explain them. All the institution are a hijo to pour beer. How they take everything we were supposed to enjoy. Mm. Everything we were supposed to enjoy. Then come, they just take. Then just take. Then just take. Then just take everything. And so, we don't listen them. We don't hear. We don't see what way journalism be the talk for those days of protests. We hear what way Cardinal Christian to me don't talk. If I want to know your friend, you go hear your own part. But now, what my worry is, what we are going to do now. That is my worry. What we, me and you can do now to end this everlasting, to stand with truth and honesty, to make sure, say, make peace must come for our people. What we must do now is what is going to change all this talk, 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 talk. You can talk, talk, and talk, talk. You go on the end up crying like this. See, our pa don't cry. Pa left from being a, a prime minister to a nobody, to a nobody. And that's how our nation was. I can see pa talking and struggling. No doubt. I, I, I can see pa didn't have stamina to fight. But then, if we have to say pa didn't have stamina, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? And so, this question should be answered by each and every one. I see when I don't cry volume. When I don't hear volume, when I don't tell me say volume don't come. I see when I cry volume. When volume don't come, when I don't tell me say when I don't hear me. Because when problem there, you must cry. But when solution comes, you must acknowledge it. You see, not the kind country we will get. We know we only cry say, I don't have food to eat. I don't have water to drink. When water comes, you know go say, yeah, water don't come. We must be changed people. Bro. When we cry about something and the thing is soft, we have to acknowledge that the thing has been solved. This is accountability now. You account. You don't cry, say, no, see. The thing come. Then you need to tell the king don't come. Don't only cry. Don't only be cry, baby. Acknowledge you when the solution don't be. Because imagine, say, I be a uh, president. And here you come cry, say, what I know the picking, I know they get water for go school. School, no, they, they can't be school. Then you know, you know, appreciate that. That means say, tomorrow, when you come cry, say, some person will say, better me they go give that other people where they appreciate every time. Mm -hmm. As we are here, we are learning too. So I thank you plenty. I want to show you a small thing. Small thing I want to show you. Because say, I know one. I know I mean some people you go get the kind bad feeling where they get last year. Capo Daniel is going to bring out all the videos that are needed to be shown out in public to everyone. Mm. Capo Daniel is going to show you the videos of ADF soldiers that are certified to go out. We know what happened last year. But I want to show you some kind thing for you. Say, me, you know, say video day. Mm, they in number, but then they raw. Last year, what would you show you raw? Nazola Republic and Ashawari people, they decalculate. We have known that revolution is not a show of uh, pictures. But I want to show you people something to see. And when I want to show you, it, if I say, as I show so, me some small uh, music to uh, play. Because uh, this is victory. We are going to for sure on this. Mm, mm, na victory where the at the one show on that one. Mm. So say when I want show on when I go see it too. Mm. I want show on that. we play music of victory. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, how about I want to my victory. Yeah, I want to show on it's my one that TV, I want TV on a show because it, everything must go through the DDC. We don't you go make make sure say they blow them before they put the house outside. So now that we're not showing sure anything. In fact, for many areas, ADF do their march pass now yesterday. The military march pass for ADF was yesterday, not be even today. <laughs> military march pass for ADF was yesterday. Today it'd be the civilian day. <laughs> we drive Cameroon. We drive Cameroon. We drive Cameroon. We balance and put up for here that they went. Yesterday, they go to military parade. I want to salute General Kapora, wonderful man. No Messi. Uh, Ebube. General Hassan. 
I don't do great. I want to also thank General Commando for that side for Mogamo. Commando, thank you. You don't do great. I want to thank also General Ayeke. Ayeke no be ADFO. Commando no be ADFO. Now say I want to thank them. They don't do great for their own section. Commando for, for Mogamo, you do good. Ayeke for that side for Libya, you do good. Me will thank you. I know they thank you under ADF. I thank you under Ambazonia. Now under Ambazonia, me person no come talk say I come to claim say Ayeke or Commando na ADF. That no. When people do good, you must thank them. We know most there for under one thing for see what is good and appreciate. And I want to thank Kapo Daniel for making such wonderful congratulation to all Ambazonian forces where they come out. Ndiam, we want to thank those Indian. Ndop, abai, Ndop, you'll be wonderful. Ndop, you are wonderful. Thank you so much. Those of you in Babisi, Ngokitunja, in Babisi, thank you plenty. We don't see everything. We have seen everything. And also want to thank General Caporal. No misses in Bui. You have done wonderful. You have done amazing. So we want to, I want to tip small things, send for one away. When Capodane don't finish for, for cook all video, we go see him. No, no worry. The one way the things they want to fix, we go see. But me a thief, small thing show. Una. All Mandela's, we know how we come dress, we soldier, we come dress and we put dress, me the day too like Christmas. We come put 1.5, say, ah, oh, we done 1.5, make all the day good with dressing. Mandela's, we know accountability this. When I go see her, when I know say for me, my eye must see for inside soldier their body before I believe say everything it don't be delivered. For we before we want thank OGC, before we want thank ADF and thank the uh, uh, the committee for the Independence Day adversary uh, uh, adversary at uh, the adversary committee. Before we want thank everyone where don't work hard, but I mean we see the thing where hey, Vanguard you come put and say make our soldier and civilian must they dress well. And so for that reason, make a thief that one I show when I for you, make when I see him. When I take on an eye, when I chop Christmas, and when I take on an eye, when I chop Christmas, this one where I'm showing us so now when I take on an eye, when I chop Christmas, now it is when I take them, when I chop them, when I see them. Mm hmm. Uh, when I don't see the one, water now, water, eh, uh, water, eh, 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 so be, I shall be shoko, I shall be shoko, na eh, dear, be this, gana, ah, hi, nya, eh, I shall be shoko, Mandela, when I see that dress, see her and day, fine, 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 all of them. Kana, hang 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 ya. When I see him, mm hmm. Kona the day where the person go come say where the day. Now then the ask now where the day. Uh huh. Hang ya. Me I not show this one day. People go see him. I feel one show so people don't see this one. When I don't see him, now then that. Mm hmm. Hang ya. Mm hmm. General, wait till you come the talk. Mm hmm. Hang ya. Now then that. Mm hmm. Hang ya. Now then that. Mm hmm. Hang ya. When I don't see him. Mm. Man way no see, you go see. Eh, man way no no, you go no. I don't see that one. No be mob, no be pep pep pep. No be cho 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 cho. The one na reality. When I come see him, na eat this. When I don't see him, no be pep 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 pep. No be cho 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 cho. No be talking talking. When I don't see him, no be chaka chaka. When I don't see him, na some kind dance that one moon I want people to see him. Today, the first of uh, October, as uh, when I did see him, eighty and four. This is Commander Blackaro. Today we prepare for go match with the barrack. Some one them they got as soon as they say, oh, we with the barrack now, so we they prepare the first of October. So we did now, so for the go match with 21 guns are for Oman. Oman, respect. Cafe for Oman, they up. 21 guns are for Oman. AJF Oha. Ready, Boha. First October. Boha. You don't get chopped for them. Men are going Yeah, one more battle for them. Boha. <laughs> Why I choose for sure this one for one, mommy and papa them. Mommy and papa them. 
who did together for year. Mommy and Papa them would I not say it won't be for some kind of time. So people tell me say the ADF day na five percent for both. Then come tell me say as a day so ADF say where they talk so say not they exist for the great state of Bowie. So the reason why I don't ask about the need for make this video available, make I come shop owner. Now to tell you mommy and papa them. All Amazonians them say, if the enemy has done the best to wipe the people out, then the people cannot do also the best to wipe their own brothers out. And so I stood so firm on them with our papa, mama, the way they don't go before. In all the people, all the fun, the way they don't disappear from before. Fun, they disappear, and they disappear. Fun, they die. I invoke our ancestors and say, protect them all the way. Protect them, all the saints. These are valiant ladies and gentlemen who want to make sure that their families are well protected. Why would somebody from within want to say they are 5% and they don't exist and they must come under their own faction if they must have to exist? And then I will turn and ask a question, are you God? Did you create a human being? Have you ever created one? And looking into my organization, there is a girl in Bermuda that happened to be one of the daughters of one of these leaders who, ex who went to Europe and abandoned the girl child in Bermuda where, uh, uh, you know, street guys are feasting on his, do on his daughter left and right. Where I even have to intervene in some cases. And so I told them, no, there should be peace. Everyone in Bui have a right to exist. Everyone in Bui have a right to coexistence. And if you are trying to fight to fight to wipe another people, another species of people in Bui that believe in a certain person, then they will not, it will not work because they didn't work for one year. And they told me, you know what? It is five percent. Either you come under our own faction, or they don't exist. And I tell them, all right, if you are God, if you created them, then they will not exist. And we will see if you have the money, because Cameroon, that say Cameroon is one and indivisible, don't have the mantle, the mantle to maintain the words Cameroon is one and indivisible. And we will see the result of And so you will stand in to say that there's only one and indivisible forces in the And then today I will ask you, where we are those forces today? We work so hard to make sure that if we were to prove a point, we will prove that point. Not only when they try to kill me and wipe me out of history. And so why would I not even prove this point? A fail to an extent where they want to kill me and wipe me out of history. Why would I not work so hard even with the other people? Because it's not one person. It's a lot of people that are working behind the scenes. Why would I not join people to work behind the scenes and make sure that point must be proven that ADF will exist in the world? Without saying that another force will not exist. Don't misquote me. Don't misquote me. Without saying that only ADF exists, I'm saying that among other forces in Bui, that ADF must exist if I am alive and if we are alive. And I thank the people that work so hard to make this happen. People are more strong when they are being fought. People are so weak and weaker when they have nothing to talk about or defend. The ADF of today is not the one of yesterday. I was a one man commander for close to two years. I stood and watched all the leaders in this program. I didn't want to belong to any faction or any group. But when people here meet every night in some forum that I was also there, I was in the scout forum. I know that what those people we are talking about, Dr. Cho, I hear them. I know it. I was a one man commander. But the things that they were saying was not good at all. People will go and run me this from a night to destroy the to destroy the house, or to destroy that area. 
We have not yet arrived. We are fighting against Korea, but you have already talked about the country. Why don't you not increase in the democratic freedom of Amazonia that even though we fight, even if the leader is as bad as what if the leader brings independence, we should educate our people more on the democratic principle of force. And then we are all going to kill Dr. Chuayama that he, he will be more than poor. But you are not even poor, you are not even poor. You only have a president, you only have a government. Who is more poor here? Do the two are you going to say the great or who that is the president for a country that don't exist? Who is more of the people here? Who is more? And so I took as one of the commanders and said, look. I might not be a lover of Dr. Cho Ayaba, but I am against everyone that has gathered to kill or fight to destroy Dr. Cho Ayaba. I am saving God. I am saving the leader. And that's what I do. So many people come to me, oh, oh, the government is a thing. But it's... Where is the independence of the court for the workers? Where is the independence of the city of Why is the outcome of the city of because, because I know, know the outcome of the UNP movie machine. Because I know the outcome of the AGF guys. I know the outcome. I've seen it. And so, these are things that are making possible things. Are we progressing? Who is making possible progress? Who is lying? Whose ideology is not delivering? Whose ideology is based on power and not on results? And if Amazonian people are thinking in this way, we would have arrived long time ago. Because the worst thing in freeing the slaves is that slaves often fight but their own uh, slave, uh, their own uh, liberators and worship their own colonial masters. Many people who fought to free the entire continent in the world have covered this. Even in other countries, in the Western world, people have said when they are fighting to free their people, their people are trying to fight them. But even in the story of the Exodus, how Moses was, and his people were Israelite by the name. At one point, the Israelite even turned to find Moses, indirectly by worshiping the fake God. That's why when Moses was coming down from the mountain, Mount Sinai, with the Ten Commandments, he saw the people were already by him, spiritually by worshiping the fake God, the golden God. And Moses, you know, fell and let the Ten Commandments, you know, shatter and got broken. He see God off and pick them and fight them together, and, together and, and say, well, well it, it is not a walk on the park. Look, look at where we are today. today. Look at Garazero today. Look, look at those who fought the age and fought everything. Where are they today? Look at all the factions and all the blocks and all the communities. Where they fought them to fight the age today. Today, all of them are They are nowhere to be found. Look at the forces on the ground where people just hijack them in order to power position in the air squad. Look at all these wonderful forces in the ground that are being great. So people in the air squad whose thing in this trouble is power. They need to have a position of a chairman, a position of a, a this, a position of that. Look at how they went and destroyed the reputations of those forces. I think that all of us should learn what to do today. All of us should learn what we do today. All of us should learn what we do today. All of us should learn what we do today. All of us should learn what we do today. What we should learn today is the country Amazonia belongs to all of us. The country of Amazonia belongs to everyone. The celebration of independence day belongs is a duty to all of us. The independence celebration does not belong to any group of faction or any leader or any artist. It is something which all of us will be proud whenever they are celebrated. We might put a lot of efforts on this day from our fellow students, but when it comes to celebration, everyone needs to join, everyone to celebrate. Like the refugee camps. You have seen the refugees celebrating. 
in the religion, religion they are not like, like you like eggs, you like this, you like this. All, all of them have come out to celebrate. They don't want to take advantage, advantage of that for political games. They came they out as Amazonians. They did not come. They did not come out as factions. Look, they said the CDP. CDP has done so much politics many times. Even when it is revolution, we have seen how CDP has paid Uganda people and put for BS flag. How many times did those things be sold? Anyone, Anyone can see a pay for a flag to be taken out or somebody's image to be moved around. around. Those are political, political manipulations that have time to expire. The, the other day, day I was, was sitting there and laughing how Chris Andrew is now the one sharing, sharing his own uh, messages. Chris Andrew is now the one sharing his own messages. Do you know what this means? Chris Arno is now the one sharing his own messages. Chris Arno is now the one sharing his own videos. Where are these all the that you share those videos out to everyone? Where are they? Where are his own slogans that you should walk around and share those things and share it to people? Where are they? That Chris Arno yesterday was sharing even in one of my groups. I was laughing all my life. I said, if I blow this, what happened? I went there and come in one day. I put only a big struggling and falling and falling. I am there a big struggling and falling. That is how I shared to an extent where he shared it even to the group that I want even by me. And I'm like, this is Chris Arno? <laughs> and I don't know that, but you know, I said, I did, not block, I did not block it. I did not delete it. Because in Amazonia, there is freedom for everyone. We are not building any tyrannic country. We are not building a country where different ideologies do not mean go and kill somebody. And that's that's a lesson to give. That's a lesson to give. They had the powers of TVs from the beginning of the struggle. They block everyone. That doesn't seem to agree with them. They block everything. But this panel, I could make you a screenshot and show it to Amazonian people. You even share your videos to people that are owned by me. Where are they? 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 Because some of these groups are viral, we don't know who own them. We just allow our people to flex in those groups. We allow our people to say things the way they feel, so we know where it is lacking. That is the reason why. So we cannot wait for that day to finish those videos that are made for the public. If you want to see more pictures of Amazonian forces, go to the Facebook page. He's a DDC. He's the one in charge in time to get to that. Go there and watch and see those videos. We know what happened last year when we showcased those uh, pictures out. First actually, it was so nice and happy, but what are the to Cameroon government did? You want to go and see pictures of the children, community school, go to Kapoda and you are going to see that Amazonia has community school. You will hear from me here. We did our job and everything is great. Go to Kapoda and page and see the videos that have been approved to be out. And you will see it right, right, right. There are already some of the pictures, videos in this page as I'm talking right, right now. That is the work of a DDC. Go to his page and you will see those videos that he uploaded. He's going to upload more. More are coming tomorrow. The problem of internet also. So many videos are on the way. I see some of them coming already here. I'm forwarding to Kapo Daniel for him to, to fix them. And then we put our in public because we cannot afford to allow those who create national army only in mainland, in their neck, to see these wonderful soldiers and go again and do what they did last year that we know. We are all aware. We are all aware. So today in Ground Zero, I don't know where the national army was fighting, but in other words, I know it could be in mainland. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. People are asking me that question of where is the national army. I don't know. I don't know. Too. Maybe they were in a prayer session. Maybe they are sleeping. Maybe they were resting. I don't know if they did it before. But you know what? So that people are asking where they were. I can't answer this question because when Kapodanya was the chairperson for the general Army, I could know the answer to that. In fact, Kapodanya was the one where he is. I'm not going to answer those questions because for some reason, somehow, technically, um, it is not even anything I would want to discuss about it. We want to see them fighting. We don't want to see them displaying and parading. We want to see them more action tomorrow. 
And that one thing where I told some missions, I said, look, it's not only about today. It's about what we do tomorrow, after tomorrow, until the next 365, 64 days to the next coming commemoration. So the journey has not ended here. The journey continues. So I want to thank each and everyone that helped, that contributed, that committed to the Common Council of Thank you so much. Everyone that donated, everyone that keep giving the little you have, thank you so much. Because again, you know, it is not, like we said, we the ADF people say, it's not only about this October, it's about who is going to make Cameroon feel like we need to clean Buya. Who is going to make Cameroon feel like as we try to clean Bavinda, it was tough, so powerful that we have to run away. We need to clean Buya. We need to clean Emante, Emoyoka. We need to clean this area. Can they come back to clean Bavinda? That is the type of thing we want to see as of now. Because it doesn't end now. That's why sometimes when we spend, we have to spend very, very judiciously because uh, very carefully, very carefully because it doesn't end one day. Our women and children need to be defended even tomorrow. They need to be defended even after tomorrow. Here they are all coming in independently. When independence they come, we celebrate only what we have achieved in the past. Why are we looking forward to achieving more? So, so this is the message I want to tell each and every one. So the message today is thank you all to all of our Thank you so much to all brothers and sisters, fellow compassionate, to anyone on earth that called himself an Amma or an Amma. Thank you so much for standing in the nation. You have done great in your various factions, wherever you are, whatever you are, whatever leadership you are. Thank you so much to the valiant soldiers on the ground. Irrespective of the way you belong. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. You have done great. And to all of you who refuted and refused to fight our brothers and sisters, who refused to take command from bad diaspora people to go and fight your other brothers because they are not coming under you for power. God bless you. That is why we are able to come out to celebrate today without fear. For those that are being used to cause atrocities, you see they, they are hiding in, inside the keeper. Can come out. Their faces cannot be seen anyway. Those that are being used to kill the general Ayos, those that are being used to kill the Indian phone in Mui, to slaughter the commanders in Mui and general Ayos, they are hiding in the bushes. They will not come, come out. Those that were in that kitchen are hiding on red and independent. You see, they are no way to be found because they have been defeated in their consciousness. That is why you see General Ayeke moving freely in that, that side, moving freely in Alu. Only Alu, not by himself. But there was a king that owned Alu himself. I don't know what happened for Fauci. I don't know what, what happened to Roma. Roma. <laughs> Roma, oh, what happened to Roma? Foche, ah, I don't know what happened to Foche. So I want to thank those who embrace peace. All Amazonians across the world, all of you in refugee camps in Nigeria and Ghana, and all of you in Ground, the IDs. Special thanks go to the civilians to the civilians and to uh, all our people in the dungeons of the Republic of Congo. We want to thank our people, the prisoners of war, those that like the has incarcerated and put them in behind bars, in the prison, in the jails. Brothers, you are paying the military price, and no doubt, you are the fathers and mothers of the nation. You are the heroes, don't forget about that. You are the Mandela's, all of you, you are the Mandela's of the world. No one is very important than another. We are all equal. We are all men and women. In the, in the same image of the creator. And so we want to thank each and every one, all of people and all citizens. Congratulations and happy Independence Day to you all. And thank you for celebrating responsibly. Now we are looking forward as the next step. The next step remains secure, protect, and defend. Because we can have our Independence Day today and celebrate, and then tomorrow that's it, it's ended, they take back our nation. We must continue to secure this day to protect this day and to defend this day by holding grass speedily and fatly 
starting from now till the next one coming. So that by the next one coming, we are already in the international news as the country, as a nation, which we are fighting for. And so the journey has, begin, has just begun. The real journey is starting right now. And so I call all Amazonians, let us forget the past and move ahead. To anyone that can collaborate, please, it's very important to collaborate. To those that can unite, unite your purpose, something we have always said is good. <coughs> Excuse me. And when we can have unity of purpose, then we preach collaboration. And so, fellow Amazonians, the past is gone. It's a humble beginning. This is a new era. We should be more inclusive. We should not be asking the enemy for dialogue. When we can dialogue among ourselves, we can ask the enemy for negotiation. When we cannot negotiate among ourselves, this Independence Day, with what we see on the grounds and everywhere, should be the humble beginning for each and every one, for all of us. We should seek peace, dialogue, and negotiation among ourselves, wherever we are falling short of the glory or the people's aspiration. We should seek knowledge. We should seek tolerance. We should seek understanding. We should seek wisdom, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the gifts that will make us to emerge victorious. These are the fruits that will make us to emerge as a clean, nice, honest, lucid, and concise nation. A nation that we believe in holding plenty of meetings to match the needs of our children. A meeting that a, a, a country that uh, we are going to seek multiple times in order to plan how to give milk and honey to our children. Remember the national anthem. A nation where plenty of meetings will be held to match the needs of our children. And so we are not only seeing that in the national anthem, but we must put it pragmatically into work. So fellow brothers and sisters, that is the lesson we are taking today. Inclusivity. Let us be more inclusive. When we have difficulties, we come to a round table or go to a round table or Zoom meeting. In the Zoom meeting, we talk about it. We can do Zoom now in Facebook, Zoom in everything. Zoom in, you know, talk about our difficulties. Let us not allow the devil to go and jump in all our difficulties. Like I was telling my brothers and sisters from Abuja, that there are other states that have problems and they don't know what other states to do. They keep their problems and give themselves an average and fix it. They don't want the house to know people to know they have a problem. I said, why should we always have a problem and, we, and people from Donga, from Mekupe, people from Okatija, we hear that we have a problem. We should learn to solve our problems within our various blocks. Take the problem, not even escalate from the block level. Solve it. That is the majority. It is a sign of strength. When you have a problem and your neighbors are going to hear you have a problem, and you are this, your friends are going to hear you, at the end you are going to be a laughing matter. And guess what? After independence, how is the national guard distributed? The national guard is distributed based on the level of risk and threat to the nation. Wherever there is more crime, wherever there is more chances of crime, receive the highest security. Wherever there's less chances of crime, receive less security. And it is what it is for a country. It is what it is. So wherever there was so much noise during the independence, we received so much of national guard. And wherever there was less noise during the independence, like India, they will receive less national guard. The only thing they will have now is those the army that defend the territorial integrity, defend the borders. But the civilians will be moving about their life without anyone asking them for anything. But in those areas where there's a lot of chaos, you know that after independence, there will be a lot because there are it's shown that there are some bad people within that society, and those bad people are making sure that we never have freedom. And so for us to secure, protect, and defend the independent world, those are going to get a lot of deployment. Oh, let these men and solve our problems in our blocks very fast as they are coming. Don't let anyone out here 
Because we don't know who are going to be in charge after independence. But for sure, those who will be leaders are always watching everything that's happening now. Don't tell me that we're going to find out that someone is going to come from Jupiter or Saturn or from somewhere and just become the president of Barcelona. If you want somebody that you knew, they're going to start preaching. You're going to know it. When you see an idiot that doesn't even know your history, I don't think that you are going to be such God and very educated to make people that don't even know your history as well. Yes. So let us continue to bring peace. Talk about peace, but practice peace. Talk about dialogue, but do dialogue. Talk about negotiation, but let's negotiate. Even when we are different in ideology and opinion. Let us also learn negotiation. As a man who does not in any way resemble us, if we can ask the enemy for negotiation, ask the enemy for dialogue. What about people who are different in a person in ideology? We should keep politics aside. Because there are some people in this world that their own type of purpose is already very, very, very chaotic. They have done politics to achieve everything they are doing. So, the people that must do the right thing must understand all their political path. Once you understand their political path, you are going down to do what you can do at your own level now to make sure that you do the right thing. You are not going to go to political power. When you know the evil political power, then you know the opposite, which is the good political power. But if you are not the evil one, you might want to show that you are doing something good. And the results will come after the year. You cannot be emotional. You can't cry. You can't be a crying baby every time. We should start to look at solutions to things. Stop talking about what others are doing. Talk about what others are doing. Talk, 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 talk about what we are thinking. And talk about the most act and do exactly what we are thinking. Stop talking. This one has done bad. This one has done bad. At the end of the day, is the image of that person that you are selling out. When you start talking, oh, this person, oh, this, look, Dr. Troy, if the people we are not talking only about Dr. Troy, if the people that he was not talking only about Dr. Troy, how would the people like me who were one man commanding see that, okay, now that some people are talking against him, let us go and start with him and see what people will do. You see, if they were not talking about Dr. Troy, people like us would not, we would have never even been with him. And so why would we talk about people you promoted? So I call the vanguards and Mandela's and call them. Please do not talk about the useless people that you already know. You are promoted at the end of the day. It's all their names that are going to be everywhere. Talk about your leaders. Talk about your institution. Talk about what you want to do. Talk about what we are giving to the people. That is very important. Talk only about what your company is. And that's what your institution has on the table. Talk about what the bank has in. You know, talk, go to your faith. If you don't know what to talk out in faith, Go to the very various words of truth and talk. Go and even have fun. Don't criticize them. Those people that don't believe in you in the same. Don't even talk about them. Because when you are talking about them, negatively it is called aggressive advertisement. Positively it is called persuasive advertisement. So when you talk about them negatively or positively, it's advertisement. That's, That's why I want to say, you know why someone has a good relationship. Some of you are going to disagree me, I say this. Trump won the election only because for four years, Democrats took four years only to impeach Trump. They were only talking about Trump. Trump, Trump. It was called aggressive advertising. Free of charge, they were not paid. In fact, they were using their own money to advertise Trump aggressively. Why Trump talked about the meeting of Obama for the next two years and discovered that boy, they are lost in that political school. Let us talk about our political manifesto and start only talking about make America great. Build the wall. And they went and hit the Congress until they gave them some million to build it. Even if it's one meter, one of the meters of the wall, they bear them. And today, strong government is showing them the wall they built. People are building them because of building the wall. And now they have a portion of the wall they are showing to their members and saying, We are come to power again, we are going to increase the wall. People who want to see the wall. That is the reality. And so, strong to talk about the impeachment of Obama came. And concentrated on building the wall and make America great. Bringing back the U.S. to stopping the U.S. from going to Africa and force fighting. Stopping the U.S. military from going to Afghanistan and Middle East. Stopping the, the fight against North Korea. And stopping even all this fight against Russia and all this fight against uh, Iran. You know? And so the Democrats took four years fighting to be strong. They didn't have to 
tell America, America, America what, what they will do. They will not tell America, look, if I was a president, I would do this. If we are a president, we would do this. When we take over, we are going to do this. 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 They were only talking about the And Trump, the people are so worried. How can you only take four years talking about only in peace or money? When we even if you do, it is my pace. One of the person from this honorable government that will still be the president. And finally, the impeachment is fair. You have told you said that it is one hundred percent proven that it is impeached. And finally, it is fair. How can you prove that America is one hundred percent proven? I don't see that there. I I I I I thought that Trump has won one years ago, like I said. I said two years ago. Because, because I'm a political student. I understand what it is very And so I'm as many people, instead of talking about what the kids are doing, talk about what you Mandela's do. Mandela's are Vargas Acosta, fellow agencies. Instead of talking about what the Ashawani people, what the Nebuchadnezzarists are doing, whether negatively or positively, talk only about what our own leaders are doing. Instead of protesting against them, protest about our own leadership for whatever is not good. If you feel as to protest something, come and see our own leadership, what they are doing that's not good and protest about it. Who tell you that they will never protest in Amazonia? He's a terrorist. You have the right to protest. Don't worry about our own leadership. Protest until they do things. They do things. When you see something that they can do, and the image of the nation will be high up. Even if no one believes in you. Even if no one believes in you. Talk about it and protest about it. That is my message for you today. That is my message for you today. Take it on. That's my message. You can't say no one can protest against a reputable leader. If we are reputable, then. All our citizens have the right to protest against us when we are not doing the right thing. We cannot make our citizens to be afraid of us. Oh, we can't say this because it's going to Jehovah. No. Once you allow our people to talk to us and even protest, we become legitimate. That's it. Period. You do not protest where you think the solution cannot come. You only protest where you see solution will come. This is what people need to understand. And unfortunately, majority of people never understand this. They take it only for the negative point. When people come to you to cry to you for problem, they value you. If I don't value anyone, why would I take my problem to that person? It's not like when somebody comes to borrow money from you, the person values it and is with you here, you be here. If the person thinks that you don't get enough for even come cry with you. So the person that always value people when people come to you for whatever reason. You understand? So they just value that. And so when we welcome the people now, even tomorrow, instead of protesting, they are going to come to discuss to us. Instead of protesting, they are going to come to discuss. But when people come to us and we don't embrace them, the next time they want to come, they will just start protesting. Or they will start wiring things in Facebook and writing things in Facebook. And you'll be like, why are they writing this in Facebook? Because maybe one time when they came to us, we will be there. And now they are using an indirect way to say it. You know, human beings, you can't stop them. You can stop them from talking to you directly. But they will always say the same thing immediately. And it's dangerous that way too. But then when they come to you first time and you embrace them and make them feel comfortable, next time when there is real shit that they probably be coming and crying, they will come only to discuss with you. And when they come to discuss with you, I don't think that they are coming because they will not shout. They are coming to discuss with you because maybe one time you are welcome them and they see that you are so, you know, you are very welcome. And so, so when somebody comes down in a low tune to talk to us, we should not take that as a weakness. We should know that they are coming because they know that we are very welcome. That, that is the spirit of impossibility. Turn on us. So I want to thank you people so much, everyone. I have seen all the images. Indeed, we are in Israel, we are gone. You can see civilian population on the ground. I saw that. It's only that my main face is blocked. Block. I can't show you the videos. <coughs> Excuse me. There are videos upon videos there in Facebook that my, my main video is blocked and I can't bring it on the screen to show you. And you go to Kapoor and like I said, you want to see so many videos. I, I see, see our civilian population out, marching. That's a great thing. I wish see that people think that that will not happen. Even with the influence of the Republic all over our territory. How many shocks Cameroon has taken to Amazonia? Now, you can see that we are Come on, please, they are military now to Amazonia and they hide in the bushes. 
<laughs> when they come to Bamenda, the only thing they do is they look for one area where there is a hotel. They make only sure that the place where hotel is, where they are sleeping, should be safe and secure. And that's it. If not, why the men do not come to Bamenda? Why they don't come to Bamenda? Yes, they will come to General Kapura. Kapura has put children all across the whole area. Atalats. Now you wear a high neck camera. For that side of the region for seven and so they won't go back. So come on, we are bringing the military and the military run and hide in bushes. Military don't know even go to say, ah, Abba, they defy the youth now, Baba. When I don't see you, I can't walk out with Baba. The ATM in Bui is standing because they are also moving not only empty. You think that ATM are moving empty? All our ancestors are with ADM. As you come see Ayeke the move with Baba, sometimes now you come, you understand. <laughs> you understand. And so we understand the culture of the people, the heritage, what we inherit from our forefathers. No one can take it away from the people. No one can take it away. It's the culture of the people is something you cannot take away from the people. So I am so confident, I knew, we know that ADM will be stand. Because we know what has happened, what has transpired. Anyone who tried to wear ATF, trust me, is finished. You gone. <clears throat> you gone. You destroyed yourself. <clears throat> so it is not even anything that you want to try. Excuse. <clears throat> Excuse. You don't even want to try. The ADM of today is not the ADM of yesterday. It's something I want to tell you here openly. You do not want to try to even want to think about anything negative to the ADF of today. A lot of things have been done. Those, some of those things are things that you do once and for all. For your safety and protection, don't even think about it. And you know the Amba that you get is from Bui. You know the youngest richest Amazonian person is from Bui. So why would we have a young rich man and you think and the young rich man is into the people's aspiration and you think that you can crack what the young rich man sees that is a good thing for the people? <laughs> for Bia cannot do it. Yawune cannot do it. Why do you think that you can do it? When me and you, we are raised in the same bushes. When me and you drop the same half white, the same in shah. We ate the same fufu and yabba yabba. We cut cut one and the other. Ate the same loom and the same mbabsi and binti. How do you think that you can in any way fight at the main We don't suffer the same like you. You see, that's why I call everyone and say, look. Stop killing your own brothers because you will kill to one level. Cameroon has tried to kill to one level to this of us. And so how do you think you can do more than another country can survive? This is just something that everyone needs to understand, no matter wherever we hide Amazon. It's a fact. Look, today you see that I don't do more of talk shows like before. When you work and do something and you are comfortable, you want to only wait for results. Larissa, they lucky. Say, some can't continue the way I want BBC and CNN to talk about. I don't know what it become happen from time to time. But Larissa, they lucky sometimes, say, because say, as we for the celebrate today, so water, water. <laughs> BBC, CNN for the report. Thunder. For inside Larissa, please. But we will not talk for people where they hear, people where they get ears, they don't hear. So I call everyone to respect each and every person, especially those who are putting everything in the list. Our people are also not much. We need to go back to the problems that are. So many people don't think say naive owner. Many people don't think say naive the only person we get everything. Madam, Yakubu, you get you with the help people bring one thousand gun for Amazonian people. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for the plenty today. God bless you. 
Happy birthday. This is the year of the Lord. As we are starting from tonight, a lot of big things are going to happen before our next coming birthday, our national independence day. So I want to thank God so much. Let love lead. lead. Love one another. If anyone say me you go do bad for another person, tell that person make it do one for your own self or make it go do one for your own self. And as if you want go, call the other person, tell him, say, now so the person want to do bad. I want to thank the people who don't do this, where the talk show. Now so I take a cash I want to thank the people who don't do like this, collaborate with cash chief people. Thank God plenty. On a cafe day of big time. On a cafe day of big time. Remember, salvation is personal. As we are working towards that, your salvation. So I want to thank everyone who don't do good. Um, before I want to finish today, before I want to finish today, I want to thank um, the, model, the model of liberation TV. The model of liberation TV. Nigella Gilles, God bless you. Queen Nigella, God bless you. I partially introduce you to your children. And when your children return from the crusade, they will want to hear from you. I partially introduce you to your children. They are in a journey. And when your children return from the crusade, they would like to hear from their mother talking. Thank you so much. They know they have the mother. I told them there are no more orphans. Uh, there are no more orphans. See, no one has stood for them for, for time, time to time. time. I, I told them the period of them being orphans has ended. I told them their mother will feed them. Their mother will cuddle them, embrace them, call them, hear from them, listen to their problems, and we solve it together. They cannot wait to return from their crusade to talk to their mother. So God bless the model of liberation TV, Queen Nigella Gilles. Your children are anxious to hear from you. This can only be an ordained, an ordained thing. The things keep coming. It's like God is talking. It's like God is saying something. That like God is sending us on a mission. And God is saying, you are the mother of these uh, children. Listen to them. Take their problems above. And let me solve their problems. And that is how it is. I do not know whether you are going to welcome the message. I do not know whether you are going to be against it. But this message is ordained. The children are crying in the wilderness. They are crying. They want a mother that can wipe their tears. They want someone that can talk to them, open their eyes and encourage them. They want to hear a voice of a woman. A voice of a voice of a mother. I think that is all they need to keep going. And the mother of liberation TV has all the qualities and all the prayers and all the revolution and revelation and all the vision stumble on her. She is not just ordinary. She is very e extraordinary. And so thank you so much, uh, Queen Nigella Gilles. God bless you for that wonderful mission. You shall indeed be a source of joy. So many as you have been in Liberation TV. Thank you so much for today. God bless everyone. It was a pleasure being with you all today. Today was a time for us to come and thank everyone. We have a lot and lot of videos. Those videos are raw. Kapo Dane, we have to determine which videos are good for outside. God bless you all. Have a wonderful time. See you all uh, anytime in the impromptus. We shall continue our impromptus and other things. Fellow brothers and sisters, have a wonderful time. And goodbye.
Oh, <laughs>